I know a lot of people are put off by ITX builds because they're not only more expensive than a full-size ATX build, but they're also much more difficult as the cases are so compact. Well, not with today's build. Not only is this case incredibly easy to build in, but it looks stunning and it won't break the bank. The case that makes this possible is the Cooler Master Encore 100 Max, a vertical case that includes the PSU, the AIO water cooler, and fans that are all neatly cabled in. Now, I managed to snag this case for a mere £200 last week with Amazon's Black Friday event. But when you consider an ITX case, an 850W SFX PSU, and an AIO will usually set you back three to 400 pounds, this case is insanely good value. Now I will be putting links to the products in the description down below. If you want to support our channel, using these links gives us a very small kickback, which helps us keep making these videos. Now this is my first time with a vertical case, and I'm so impressed with how little desk space it occupies. Yes, it's pretty tall, but when it sits alongside your monitor, that probably won't matter. And this case comes in gunmetal gray, or this incredible bronze color. It's got front ports, room for a three slot large graphics card, plus the 120 mm AIO will handle moderately power hungry CPUs. The case is solid, but pops apart quickly, allowing us to get inside to the internals. So let's build up the motherboard ready to install inside of it. And to keep this PC powerful yet cost efficient, we've chosen to go the AMD route. And the motherboard is the ASRock B650i Lightning, a well featured ITX board that can support 7000 and 9000 Ryzen CPUs. It has a Gen 5 and a Gen 4 M.2 SSD slot, Wi-Fi 6E, a good range of rear ports, and gave me no issues with my 6000 megahertz RAM kit. And for the CPU, we chose the Ryzen 9 7900 CPU. This 12 core, 24 thread CPU is well priced, yet excels at gaming and work alike, and it only draws about 90 watts of power in its default configuration. Obviously, if you're going from pure gaming build, you may want to choose the 7800X3D or the 9800X3D if you can get hold of them. But this build is for work and play and the 7900 is actually cheaper than even the 7800X3D at the moment. For the SSD, we've used our trusty SN850X 2TB. These are fast Gen 4 drives at a very reasonable price backed with a five year warranty. Now we could have put a Gen 5 drive in here, but Gen 5 drives are still so expensive and wouldn't have worked out for this budget. Next, we've installed the Crucial Pro DDR5 32GB 6000 kit. This kit was an absolute bargain on Amazon at the moment, coming in at just £66 for that 32 gigabyte kit. And although it has no RGB, the heat spreaders are great quality and we had no issues with compatibility, setting it to Expo BIOS worked perfectly. So that's our motherboard built, let's install it into the case. And lying that end core on its side, we just cleared the cables out of the way to insert our motherboard and secure it down with the four screws. Next we plug in the PCIe 4 riser cable for the graphics card and we plug in the actual front audio connector. Now is also a good time to plug in the 24 pin and the 8 pin power cables. And Cooler Master have done a great job here using shortened cables from that PSU that are secured in place, making it very easy to plug it into the motherboard and tidy those cables away. And this can be one of the biggest challenges when you're building in a small ITX case. We then just attach the front power button header, the USB connectors, and then tidy those cables away. So now it's time to prepare the AIO cooler block. Cooler Master give you AMD and Intel mounts. Now the riser mount is actually using the stock motherboard plate, so it's just a case of removing the protective plastic off the AIO copper sink, then screwing on the AMD retention bracket. Pop some thermal paste on the CPU, then carefully clip the AIO block onto the CPU mounts. We then just plug in the actual pump and the fan cables, and that's the CPU done. Lastly, we need to install the actual graphics card, and this ITX case can handle some very large graphics cards. By default, it's set up for a three slot card, but you can extend it out to make room for a 3.9 slot card at the expense of a slightly larger case. Now I'm using the ASRock 7900GRE Steel Legend. This is a totally underrated card, costing similarly to a 4070, yet performing well ahead of a 4070 Super in non-ray trace games. Plus you get 16 gigabytes of RAM, unlike Nvidia's stingy 12 gigabytes. The Steel Legend version is pretty large, but has three RGB fans and great cooling. Being an AMD card, we need to remove the NVIDIA 12 VHPWR cable that came installed by default onto the actual PSU, and instead put in the standard PCIe cables for the graphics card. Then flipping the case over, we slot the graphics card into place and screw it down. Lastly, we connect in those two 8-pin PCIe connectors to the 7900 GRE, and it's time to put all the panels back onto this PC. And there we go, our tower of power is built. Let's get it over to the gaming desk and start testing it. 
Now, although this 7900 GRE is more of a 1440p card, I'm enjoying my 4K mini LED screen so much that I don't want to take it off my gaming desk. And surprisingly, the 7900 GRE did pretty well, even at 4K in both the finals and the Apex games, which I play all the time. What I particularly liked is just how quiet and cool the system was running. The fans came in at just about 37 decibels in our heavy gaming tests, and the temps for both the CPU and the GPU sat in the 60s, and you could easily crank the fans up a little bit if you want even cooler temperatures. Using an efficient processor like the Ryzen 7 7900 really helps here, as the 120mm AIO has no problems cooling 90 watts of power, and yet it still hits about 5.4 gigahertz in our games testing. All this power and it hardly takes up any space on your desk. This is my first vertical case and it certainly won't be my last. So there we have it, the all AMD Encore 100 Max build. It looks great and it's not gonna break the bank. As always, I'd love to know what you guys think of this build. Also, if you have any other cases you'd like to see on this channel, please comment down below. And lastly, I just wanna say, thanks for watching.